Okay, fight fans and fight fiends, welcome back to Manny's Thoughts. I, of course, Manny MTL or Manny Montreal. Make sure to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and obviously, thefightcity.com. As usual, I'll give you guys my thoughts on what's going down in the world of combat sports. So let's get to it. Okay, so before I get to the congratulations, unfortunately, I got a bit of bad news. Mike Ricci was unable to fight for that belt as he injured his hand. Seems he's going to be out for at least another four weeks. Good news, he'll be back to work. Bad news, he's injured. However, I and the members of Fight City, and I'm sure all his fans here in Montreal, wish him well and a fast and speedy recovery. Get back in there soon, kiddo. We need to bust that nut. I was so looking forward to that fight, and I'm sure he was too. Keep your eyes out, people. Mike Ricci, four to six weeks from now, things will happen. All right, so that leads me to congratulations. I still ended up watching Titan FC, and I'm happy I did. The return of Desmond the Predator Green sent this boy to the promised land in 30 seconds. Terrific KO from Desmond Green. If you didn't get a chance, go hit him up on his Instagram or his Facebook. It's only 30 seconds, so it's all over the internet. Beautiful knockout. Now, uh, on UFC news, regular Joe, Joseph Duffy. Well, turns out not so regular after all. There's no hype behind this kid, but man, he is one tough nut. He went and just smoked this dude, went for a beautiful submission. Uh, the, basically, it went down to the ground because this guy didn't want to stand with him. Just another great fight, another solid performance from the most uh, dominant bet you could have out there. This guy will never fail you. Joseph Duffy, look out for him. So that leads me to what's in the news in the Fight City. And we got some big announcements in Montreal. None other than the return of Lucien Boutin was announced at the Bell Center August 15th against De Luisa. It's going down on NBC Sports, free and live, thanks to PBC. Free boxing for all. It's just fantastic stuff. The card's going to be solid. We've got uh, Oscar Kaboom Rivas. We've got uh, Elder Storm Alvarez on there. And little side note, also from Grant Brothers Boxing, they've announced Eric Bazinian will be fighting. Now, this kid's on a tear. He's undefeated. And this is a big step up for him. He's going to be seen across North America. Now, fingers crossed, they haven't found his opponent yet. But this young man knows what kind of a big challenge this is. And trust me, he is working very hard for this opportunity. Fingers crossed, they find him an opponent and the fight goes down. And we get the whole world gets to see what I've been seeing for a good year now. Now, uh, speaking of the actual press conference, I just want to make a quick mention. Uh, about a month ago or so, I was privileged to attend another press conference, the Golden Boy I had a Tiger Management press conference. Now, I just want to highlight some differences between the press conference that I went to with I had a Tiger Management and Golden Boy, and this pre uh, press conference that I went to held by Interbox and Group Yvonne Michel. Now, um, Golden Boy's press conference had stars. Oscar De La Hoya, Bernard Hopkins. It was just, I mean, how often do you get to sit in a room with them? If it's And especially if nobody's fighting. So uh, it goes down at the Bell Center in the heart of downtown at around 10 a.m. Just perfect stuff, perfect time, perfect uh, place. There's a good number of media there and they're all taking pictures and everyone got their interviews it was a solid beautiful day now let's go over to the uh, group Yvon Michel Interbox co-promotion of Lucien Boutet's return they do this thing all the way out in Boucherville now if you don't know where that is it's an hour's drive and if there's traffic it's a little longer than that it's just it's no fun, we're an island, there's bridges, it's on the other side of the bridge, it's not near. Then on top of that, they do it mid-afternoon. Therefore, almost guaranteeing that when this thing finishes, you're going to have to try and get back across during rush hour. Which is just, you know, insane. So, personally I think it was a trick from Casual Spa in order to force people to sit there and eat. But, regardless, worst hour, worst location... The biggest star there, let's face it, is Lucien Boutet. And, well, there was three times as much media. The place was jamming. It was like they were announcing a new bridge. Or, 
I, I can't even explain it. I walked in there and I was like, come on, this is nuts. Where are these guys from? I was like, okay, this has got to be like local paper stuff, you know? Like, this doesn't even make sense. Nope. CBC, TVA, LCN. I can't, I can't. There was 15, 20 of these dudes with big, you know, names. And then there was another 15, 20 of the regular guys. And then a couple of guys like me. But the point is, it was a big press conference. This went out across Canada. This was huge. Oscar De La Hoya was in downtown Montreal, and I bet you anything, the people in BC and Alberta had no clue. But Lucien Boutte announces his return to the ring, poof, across the nation, people. Romania went nuts, we all know that. The point is, Lucien Boutte is a megastar in this town. And um, although I wasn't a fan of his, admittedly, in the beginning because I mean he was such a media darling by some people that I honestly do not respect their opinions and uh, think they know nothing about boxing but they were enthralled with the guy so I was like yeah you keep doing that see now that they spat on him and they don't care about him anymore now that I see these postings on Facebook and I'm privileged to seeing all these uh, things go on and I'm privileged to these conversations and I see what kind of hard work this man puts in I can't deny it Go look at his record. Go look at who he's fought. Go look at what this guy's done. Now, say what you want about his injuries and, you know, him finding trainers and this and that. This is the truth. It was as simple as him wanting to come back. I've had a really shitty job. More than one. And uh, it's what led me to create whatever the fuck this is. But... Those shitty jobs, I remember what it felt like to go to that shitty job. You don't want to be there. You're not you. You're not doing the best you. You're not giving people the best you. You're not happy to be there. So, you leave. And, essentially, that's what Lucien really did. Lucien's now fighting for himself. Because he wants to. Because it's fun. Nobody trains twice a day, six days a week because they don't like it or because they need the money. First off, he's well off financially. He's very, very intelligent. Second off, there's no denying the work this man does. If you go to the gym after he's done working out, now this might be an older reference for you younger fans, but the older people that watch the show will at least get it. If you've ever seen the comic strip Family Circus, that's what it looks like when you go to the gym after Luce Butte's left. There is a water trail from where he skipped rope, to where he was on the heavy bag, to where he was on the speed bag, to where he was on the focus bag, to where he was shadow boxing, to where he was doing pads, to where he was sparring six rounds, to where he got off and went on the treadmill, to where he went to the bike, to where he went and shook people's hands before he left. There is just liters of sweat everywhere. This dude wants this. So who cares what everyone thinks? He's done. He's no good. He's injured. Uh, you know, maybe when he was younger. Everyone can criticize all they want. I know what the man's desire is. And that's what's more important about this whole damn thing. Do not sleep on Luchan Butte. Because I think De Luisa is going to get a hell of a surprise. I sincerely think that people think that, oh, this is just some sort of drummed up fight. No, De Luisa is a fucking tough opponent. The kid's got a hell of a record, a tough fucking chin, and he can go 12 rounds. Butte hasn't been in the ring in over a year. And, you know, to say that he's taking an easy fight is fucking bullshit. So, bottom line is this. I've seen the man work, and I know what his desire is, so just trust me when I say it. Watch out for Lucien Butte. Okay, so this leads me from the good to the bad. Sergei Kovalev. More yelling, more stupidities, more Donald Trump-like stuff. You know, every time they give this guy a mic, he just uses it to swear. He's like the Andrew Dice Clay of boxing. Calling everyone a piece of shit that he can. I mean, you know, maybe if you put the vulgarities away and stop calling, you know, Canadian... By the way, he called all Canadian fighters shit. Instead of calling people shit and, you know, saying bad things, how about this? How about you get yourself an actual manager? Hmm? How about a real promotional team?
How about instead of you saying stupid shit on Twitter, you get somebody to actually make you a fight that matters? Hmm? Al Heyman's got the money. Adonis has got the money. Jean Pascal is doing okay. You're the only one with three belts suffering. So it's normal that you're bitching and whining. But don't let everybody know. It just makes you look like a weak, ignorant dumbass. So that leads me to what we got going on this week. It's pretty easy. Saturday night is fight night. Basically all afternoon and night on Fox Sports 1 and on TSN you'll be able to watch Dillashaw vs. Barrow 2. It's Forrest Strap. Also on there you got Misha Tate vs. Jessica I. The whole card's got names you should know. And basically it's all fights I want to see. So it's a solid night and day of MMA. Now, uh, speaking of Kovalev earlier, he is also fighting on HBO Live and Free at 10 p.m. versus Mohamendi. Now, on the undercard of that, we also have Jean Pascal versus Gonzalez. Now, Gonzalez, Uneski Gonzalez, is no walk in the park. Although I am not a fan of Jean Pascal, he is from here and he is fighting someone else, so I am going to root for him. However, like I said, Gonzalez is no walk in the park. The young man 16-0 with 12 KOs. His last seven fights have been knockouts. He's got that Cuban style. He's very dangerous. And we all know Pascal can be touched. So you never know. The underdog might just pull it out. Now, uh, as far as Kovalev and Mohamendi. Mohamendi from France. Little Montreal connection there as well. Being represented by Anna Riva. This is uh, basically... Going to be a tough fight for Mohamendi. He is coming in at a very, very deep underdog. However, I am going to root for him because we all know Kovalev is just no good for the sport. At least his personality, anyway. You see, uh, Mohamendi is no slouch either. He's from France. He's 37-3. and He's got 23 KOs of his own. He's 30 years old, so he's not over the hill. And he's a game dude. And he's got zero pressure on him. So, who knows? He might just come out there and swing for the fences. Now, uh, that being said, I already said it. All this hype from Kovalev, you know, doing this stuff on Twitter and calling everyone a piece of shit. It's a cry for help. The man needs money. He needs money. Because he definitely doesn't have a promoter or a manager worth a shit. That being said, those are my thoughts for this week. Make sure you check out my other thoughts. Make sure you check out the Fight City. I am going to be posting exclusive Lucien Boutte and Eric Bazinian pictures this week on the Fight City's website. I will have videos and more pictures on the Fight City's Facebook page. Check us out on Instagram. Buy our t-shirts. Like, share, subscribe, and do all that good stuff. I'll see you guys next week. <laughs>